if your excuse for not subscribing to my channel was crappy image quality, you don't have an excuse anymore. Right, so today's topic, pet peeves. And I don't mean just regular pet peeves like people who spit in public, which is a pet peeve, but we're gonna be a bit more specific. We're gonna talk about singer pet peeves or teacher pet peeves, kind of a mixture of both. One thing I hear more often than any from someone who, from someone who thinks they know singing is this phrase. Well, see, the thing is, you have to sing from your diaphragm. Seriously? Yeah, that's one of their biggest pet peeves. And I think it was definitely something that confused me when I was starting out, because I kind of know human anatomy, and I wasn't sure how <laughs> this, just this hat-like band of muscle was gonna help me support singing, so, uh. Um, turns out that according to my teachers, that's a load of horse crap. The only real thing a diaphragm <laughs> is good for is inhalation. It just helps you breathe in. The only significance that has is for you to, um, breathe in fully. So if you're not relaxed around your ribcage um, and uh, relaxing your abdominal muscles that can't fall as far as it kind of needs to and bring in air. So it is significant in that respect, but you don't sing with it. That's not your primary source of support. And if anyone tells you that it is, tell them they don't know jack squat. I hear a lot of um, Again, like beginner students repeat that phrase and I also hear a lot of um, pop musicians use that phrase and um, not good. I think when most people use this phrase they're talking about support um, so I'm gonna get a little bit into that. Support is super important and um, it's super controversial like if you for the most part if you ask three different teachers you get three different answers about vocal support, but this is what I was taught, and it's super Italianate, so mm, um, take all of this with a grain of salt. Um, I was taught to expand your rib cage, so relax your intercostal muscles, which are the bands of muscles that kind of wrap around your um, your rib cage, and um, so relax it going in, so your rib cage. So your back, your your front, the side, all of 360 should really expand. It should become like a barrel. Uh, not so much that you're cutting off air at your throat, um, but relax and wide. And when you breathe out, you should keep that fullness here. So you're not pumping in and out as you um, inhale for the next um, phrase and then exhale and then you have to reinflate again. Um, it's not exactly the most efficient. So you do that and you just let the air go. Uh, whatever um, sort of lower abdominal muscles that need to engage will engage. I think most singers either underthink support or overthink support. Um, and it really should be right in the middle, kind of Goldilocks. By underthinking it, I mean I think sometimes singers just don't think about it at all. You just think producing a beautiful sound, you know, whatever comes from this part of your singing apparatus is enough and that's good and whatever, and kind of is true. I mean, in a way, because you're gonna be making, you're gonna be making beautiful sound um, if you just have natural voice and range and colors for it, uh, but it's not going to be sustainable for a really long career, especially if you're going to do what I'm doing, which is opera, which is, you know, you're singing unamplified into a massive auditorium, sometimes, projecting over an orchestra that are, I mean, like, instruments that are made out of wood and brass and whatever, so, um, you know, good luck trying to sustain that career for 20, 25 years it's without support. That's going to be really difficult. The other end of that spectrum, is um, people who overthink it and people who nitpick every single bit of their um, support 
different structure. Like, is it too much um, lower abdominal? No, it's, it's just too much rib. It's not enough rib. And, you know, it's too out. It's too in. It's too held. It's too loose. It's too meh. And then, or, um, you know, doing too much of one thing. So squeezing too much, letting go too much. I think that kind of overthinking can be really, really detrimental to actually good support. So now that I've gone on a little bit of a teacher's rant spiel, um, go back to the pet peeve part. Usually people who say support with your diaphragm have no idea what they're talking about. So if they tell you how to do something, smile, nod, be nice, but don't take their advice because it's, like I said, a load of horse dookie. Um, what you really should be doing with your diaphragm is relaxing the muscles surrounding it so it can fall and give you maximum air capacity. Other than that, your diaphragm, it's there. That's all it needs to do. It just needs to exist. Really what you should be doing for support is expanding your ribcage, letting it out. Just let it float there and kind of like a barrel dimension. Think about it as a barrel, I think, is the best way. Well, that's what helped me the most. I had no idea what my teacher was talking about until I read barrel. Think about it as a barrel and your air is coming in from the bottom and you're filling it up from the bottom up. Other than that, there's not much to support. Um, there are certain times where you do give a bit more and that you give a bit less, but that's going to kind of depend on what kind of voice you have and what part of your range you're singing and where your breaks are. So I'm not going to tell you that. That's something you discuss with your teacher. But yeah, singing with your diaphragm. Shaking my head, man. Shaking my head. Okay, so if you got to this part of the video, congratulations again. You've made it to the end. Um, don't forget to click uh, like and is it subscribe. Still <laughs> getting used to this thing. Um, but yeah, got a new camera, which is really exciting. Um, it's kind of awesome, the picture quality, so it's kind of motivating me to make more videos. So yeah, um, subscribe, like, comment. I love, I would love to hear from you guys. Any questions, any of your pet peeves, I would love to hear about because I know you have them. Don't lie. <laughs> All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye.